welcome back to the closing ceremony of our event. We understand the excitement and the anticipation in the air as well uh, as we all eagerly wait the results. Before we proceed, I would like to request our distinguished guest, Dr. Kiran Bedi, our principal, Mrs. Neeti Bhalla Saini, and the knowledge curator for this conference, Mr. Pranab Mukherjee, to take their seats on the stage. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. I would now request our principal. I would now request our principal, Mrs. Neeti Bhalla Saini, to address the gathering. Good morning, everybody. It's still morning by two minutes. As we come to the end of this inspirational journey, remember to all the students, all the teachers who are here, this is just not the end of one journey, but the beginning of another journey for you. Because like I said on the opening day, I'm sure each one of you have carried something, have learned in these three and a half days, something that you will carry back with you. Uh, a lot of things I learned honestly, when I was part of some of the events uh, as you were performing. I would formally like to take this opportunity to welcome and my heartfelt gratitude towards Dr. Kiran Bedi. Ma'am, you're such a visionary leader. If I go back to my childhood, I think I grew up looking at you and admiring you. And, and honestly, I, I was so tempted to share this with you in the conference room. But when you said that, how did we learn adversity? We learned it by just doing things. So many times in life when I was growing up, when I was in school, in college, and when I was faced with adversity, I would think, how did she, how does she do it? Being the first woman IPS, how does she do it? And I would just say that there's something that she has in her, what she does. And it would just get me to go to the next level. So you've been inspirational for millions of us, but I think more so for women folk. Thank you so much for shaping all of us. Thank you, ma'am. A special thanks to our conference curator, Mr. Parnav Mukherjee, who conceptualized this idea of this whole conference. He has worked tirelessly. Um, it's not a work of two months, two weeks, but it's a work of years. Being the 13th edition, so I started with it uh, 13 years ago, and just yesterday evening in my office, we were having this conversation that how he was expressing his desire to go back to the original version and maybe have some new aspects, and we had a long discussion on that. Um, but sir, thank you for guiding the students and working tirelessly alongside to make sure let them, to let them make their mistakes, to learn from those mistakes, and then grow as individuals. Uh, to me, there is nothing which is perfect because they will, everything in life will always have little flaws. And when we have those, those are our opportunities to reflect, look at them and say, how do we improve and how do we go forward and make it better the next time? So there's always, um, there's always space. So today, people who will come first, second, third, who will be the best speakers, whoever, whatever is being judged today, the results will get announced. Remember one thing, you will always have nobody but yourself to compete with. You will keep growing if you keep competing with yourself and making yourself a better version each year after year. Um, with these discussions, the conference, the debates, I think you've given them 
a very enriching experience, but more than that, a lot more food for thought to see for themselves how do they now um, take this journey on. And I loved what you said that it's not a debate that you do um, here or 10 years later or 20 years later. 20 years later, this may become a part of your life when we are using these skills to have clear communication, to be able to express your thoughts and to understand what the other person is saying. So for me, that's what they're learning, the skills of debating, of argument, of presenting a case the way it should be presented, not by raising their voice, but by giving strong point views, which the other person finds it difficult to reject. I always say this in my office and outside my office, I'm happy to agree to disagree. We can all agree to disagree respectfully, and that's what you said in the opening um, day, that let's all be more respectful towards each participant, each individual. And that's a value, that's a skill that each student learns as they learn debating, as they learn quizzing, as they learn the drama through these platforms. I think something that the students have also taken on and which has been talked about is your critical thinking. Teamwork, you might have worked with teams whom you had never worked before. Your school just put you together and sent you here. Or you might have worked with a team whom, whom you've always worked with, but you learned something new about them. So it's essential when you are in these areas, in such conferences that you make sure that the skills that you are honing. So nobody goes back today, I know, without learning something new. Everybody has learned one thing new. Um, just a little take on the syllabus bit, and being a principal, we take it very hard on ourselves, the, the syllabus. It did make me reflect that, you know, um, yeah, our calendar is too packed and we need to review our calendar, but while you were saying something, and I wrote this little one bit, it said, I said, syllabus is just an outline. To me, it's a translation, it's a transaction where creativity lies. So that outline, by use of right pedagogy, the outline of the syllabus transfers into creativity. So creativity lies and embeds into that outline. Syllabus and creativity can't be two separate things. Syllabus becomes syllabus when it's just taught, but when it's learned, it's creativity. So that's how I see a syllabus, it's about the pedagogy. I'm just reminded of the words of Albert Einstein, which says, intellectual growth should commence at birth and cease only at death. And may the love of lifelong learning continue to drive you all for what you do. For this is the curiosity and hunger for knowledge that will shape all of our futures. So thank you once again. Thank you to your schools for sending you here. And let's wait for the results. Thank you, ma'am. It is my honor and privilege to invite our esteemed guest of honor, Dr. Kiran Bedi, to address the gathering. Thank you. Thank you so much. Lots of love. Lots of love to all of you. Thank you. Bless you all, and thank you so much. Thank you. Please be seated, children. I want to thank your principal and your entire school, your faculty, for giving me the opportunity to be with India's finest school, finest boarding school, finest. I happened to know your principal once before, when she was principal in Satya School in Delhi. And I'd gone for her for an annual event there. I didn't know destiny would make us meet today here today. So I'm so happy that I reconnected with her, because she happened to be in my address book when I was connecting with her. I didn't know she'd moved. She's the same one who'd moved to Mayo. So it was such a wonderful fortune that I could reconnect with her. I also want to thank my very dear friend, Dr. Veena Kalra, the Kalra family, who connected me actually with Neeta once again, because of very, very important personal reason. But 
it is the Kalra family, and the parents happen to be here today, whose daughter is with you. So therefore, I'm very, very happy that thanks to Veena Kalra that she connected me back with your principal. Veena was very dear to me and continues to be. She was the family doctor of my daughter when my daughter was just about three, four, and Veena took care of her while I was dealing with dacoits and terrorists and law and order, and my friends, Veena, took care of my daughter. So I really loved her for whatever she did. So it's their family, which is their daughter is with you. Recognizing the presence of Mr. Mukherjee and the way he taught you a word about declamation, a word about little naughty uh, comment on your declamation. May I? May I make a comment on the declamation or the debates you've done? May I? You all who participated in deserve one award. One common award is speed speaking. You have all spoken so brilliantly fast and wanted to say it all in those two minutes. In speaking so fast, whether we get it or not, you got it. <laughs> and I was asking a principal, were they trained to do this? Were they asked to do this? She said, no, there's a time limit and they want to say it all. But as you grow, you will speak the way your principal spoke. Did she speak? Because she has to say so much. But see, that is where time alone will train you. But is that essential to do what they did? Minor filler. Because I too have been a debater during my college time. I began with a freshers debate and I know. But as I said, you all are... Um, worthy of a one award, if I would have it, is speed speaking. And you win it hands down. But when you grow up to make a speech in another college, it will not be Mayo College again. It will be different. It will be different, and you may have to now reduce your speed so that you connect with the audience. Because here is for a purpose, and there is for another purpose. But anyway, um, you will learn as I learned through the hard way. But I fully congratulate you for the amazing effort, the kind of agility, the creativity, and the innovation and the entrepreneurship uh, you all showed in, your, uh, in the event today. I'm sure we all learned so much and picked up so much. I welcome all the sc other schools who are participating here other than the Mayo. Even the boys' Mayo, right? I believe the Mayo principal is here, Mayo school, college principal. Is he here? Boys, Mayo boys, is he here? No, he's not here. Now, I have a complaint to make. Why don't the boys' school invite women? Why don't the boys' school <laughs> colleges invite Why not? Don't the boys need to meet um, high-achieving women? <laughs> so boys, would you go and tell the principal? Tell the principal? Not that I am going to come back again quickly, no. But there are now scores of hundreds of very highly um, high-achieving women in this country who boys must meet now before it's too late, so that they can look up to them also as mentors and as, as guides and role models. That aside, see those two remarks on the declamation and the boys, I, it was brewing in my mind, I thought I'll get it off my chest. <laughs> now you spoke a lot about freedom. I have two very interesting things to share with you. The first is an event I attended only four days ago at the Aurobindo Ashrams, Mothers International, Aurobindo Ashram School in Delhi. They were celebrating the National Integration Day, and it was linked with freedom, Mr. Mukherjee. It was linked with freedom, and it came soon after the Independence Day, and it was called the National Integration Day. And guess how they celebrated it? And that's now a little 
sharing of an idea with your principal and the school. So it's two ways, both for the curator, as a curator, whoever is a curator, whoever is even putting aside your icons, you've had Shakespeare and other artists, you've done six of them, you studied the six or seven of them, say seven, six, six of them, Shakespeare and others, Mirnal Sen and others, six of them? Six of them. Did you curate that too? Yes. Oh, good. I'm offering another suggestion even to Mr. Mukherjee and also to your principal on curation for consideration. It's an idea, but it's an idea which fascinated me. And I would love to see this as, uh, as an option of freedom and national integration, it's interlinked. And when I was invited, to, I thought they would have the same, uh, we would have some uh, interesting traditional way of celebrating. It wasn't like that. The school, Aurobindo school, ashram, had invited 12, ah, it had invited, um, about 30, oh no, 40, 40 women music, te oh, not women, m music teachers from across the country. 40 music teachers from across the schools in the country. And for what? To train and sing in 12 Indian languages, patriotic songs. <laughs> so what did they do? All these mu music teachers, friends, they came and together learned to sing patriotic songs in 12 languages. And they all sang. In just in one week's time, these 40 music teachers learned each other's language. They were singing in Tamil, they were singing in Malayalam, they were singing in Punjabi, they were singing in Kannada, and various other languages, 12 Indian languages. And they were now brothers and sisters in arms. That is the way they celebrated the National Integration Day. Now, this is a curation of music where they brought in, in national integration. When I heard that, when I listened to that program, it gave me a great idea. And I then, when they asked me to speak, and I said, how about taking this forward? to other schools also. Therefore, when Mayo invited me, I thought I'd share it with Madam Principal and suggested to her that it's a worthwhile idea how you, when you do it, how you do it, it's your choice. But it's a great way of connecting India together. And that's to me the real challenge of today. The challenge of Indian today is psychological unity, not geographical unity. It's psychological unity. <laughs> And psychological unity, my friends, does not happen without language. It begins with language. I, I know your language. Like, for instance, when I was working in Pondicherry, even by saying Vanakam, Vanakam was, brought a smile to my uh, visitor. Just by word Vanakam. Just by saying Vanakam, uh, one word of thank you. One. See the Prime Minister when he makes a speech and if he's in somewhere in South and he first speaks one, a few lines, the whole audience, all spectators uh, spring on the, the, uh, on the legs and feet and start cheering because they love the language. Language is a big uniter and language has been in India's biggest divider. It's a very big divider because large percentage uh, of this country does not know these basic, the Hindi and the English in particular, which is literally emerging as a... So what's my suggestion? So I made a suggestion for your consideration. I suggested, how about doing this in their own schools? Secondly, I requested the Aurobindo, let's write to the Prime Minister's office and have these kind of programs of these all language patriotic songs being sung on 15th of August from the ramparts of the Red Fort after the national flag is unfurled by the Prime Minister. And imagine if 12, all 12 languages are heard by all over the country, it will totally unify everybody they, because they'll have celebrated it in their own language. Then I suggested even more, and that's a consideration also for the school. Since you talked about freedom, I thought of sharing this anecdote with you of this, of this Independence Day celebration. What I suggested is allow the child 
because you today, today YouTube is a teacher. YouTube is a trainer. People are even learning piano and guitar from the YouTube on their own, those who are interested. They, I said, why not allow a child learn any South Indian, a North Indian student, learn any one South Indian language up on your own. Declare that you've learned it. And once you, even conversational, no pass, no examination, no syllabus. So no syllabus to be entered, but it's your voluntary syllabus. You learn a North Indian, if you are North Indian, learn the South Indian language. Pick up the language of your choice. And if you're a South Indian, pick up. So before we go into a foreign language, let's learn an Indian language. And in that Indian language, learn the uh, language of another uh, territory. And this way, what do you do? You say, you tell the conversation, you let your teacher in school know, you've done it. You get a school certificate of national integration, where you said this. So that means another wonderful meritorious certificate to the child who's learned this language <laughs> voluntarily. Second, third, the third was, you all also have a holiday with your parents. You go to Europe. You go to Europe, you go to Scandinavia, you go to America, you go everywhere. And in the Western world, you go to Europe, you go to America, and you, they all look alike at one time. They all look alike. They all have the same kind of housing, the big roads, the highways, etc. Everything's the same almost. So therefore, I suggested to them that any parent who, who takes a family to the to another part of India to show the cultural heritage of that area and have a holiday there, give the parent a certificate of national integration as a PTA award. So PTA award, child award. Then I had the same naughty idea even for my, for my government of India. And I said, why can't the government of India run Vande Bharats, et cetera, as north to south trains, national integration trains, south to north trains, so that children from the south could come to see Delhi, and the Delhiites could see Vivekananda Rock and other Rameshwan temples, et cetera. Why not? I thought of this why, because I had an opportunity to speak to some of the schools in the south, deep down south, and ask many of them, I, probably it was somewhere near 26 January, and I just John Sway asked, uh, by, by the way, how many of you girls raise, boys and girls raise your hands? How, how many of you have seen Delhi? How many of you have seen Delhi? No, no, I'm not asking you. I know you've seen. I'm asking Kerala. Uh, no, they were, it was Kerala, by the way. I asked, that was deep down ahead of Trivandrum, somewhere in the villages. I asked them, children, how many of you have seen Delhi? There were just five hands in a large group. Five hands. Imagine those children have not seen the Rajpath. They've not seen the Karvapath. They've not seen the Parliament House. They've not seen India Gate. They've not seen Kutub Minar. They've not seen Red Fort. That's history of India. That's the heritage of India. But if you don't see and unite, how will you have psychological unity? So language, culture, travel, seeing, experiencing, my friends, is very, very vital for this kind of unity. So I leave it to, again, school exchange programs. While Vandeva, uh, train may do it, the train minister may like it, like the idea or not, because I tweeted it also to the uh, honorable minister. Could we do this? But schools can do these exchange programs. Mayo can uh, uh, organize with a South Indian school. South Indian school can uh, organize something like this. You could do a train exchange programs of North to South. Is that an option? Is that an option? Can be an option? You do go. So as a rule, while you go, see, you're doing the right thing, what you're doing. That's the way to do it. If schools around the country, north to south, and south to north, every then anybody who's got a vested interest in keeping it differently will, will be isolated. Vested interests will get isolated, and youth will start talking about north and south uh, coming together. I thought so much for your National Integration Unity Day and linked with freedom. One more idea before I finish is, since you talked about freedom and independence, I want to give you an acronym of freedom. And the acronym of freedom is the ABCD of freedom. The ABCD of freedom. 
Can, can you try what does A stand for? Raise your hand and stand and speak. A stands for? Wonderful. See that? A stands for Atam Nirbhar. How beautiful. Any other A? A, B, C, D of freedom is Atam Nirbhar. Brilliant. Couldn't be better. Any other A? Atam Vishwas. Any other A for freedom? Anushasan. How brilliant. Yes. Accommodative. Very good. Any other? Hanji? Aspiration. Aspirational. Right. Hanji? Aspirational. Admiration. A stands for in the ABCD as my, as now I'm looking at your future. Because now you're moving out gradually from the school to an open world of freedom. You are at the moment very wonderfully protected, cared for, mothered, and you're in a residential home where you have house mothers and you have teachers who, who are your very big mentors and guides, actually like your mothers, like godmothers. A for those who will be very soon going into the final open world where there is no hostel and there is no house mother. There's your home and you may be even away from your parents. A for ability. If you can all factor in rising ability, the freedom, the biggest uh, freedom for you, the ABC of freedom, first would be, I, I would, all these names which you run for you make sense, is ability. Now, why do I say ability? Because all that is being tutored to you, taught to you by syllabus, straight away structured syllabus, then it will be unstructured. Then you will have to structure your own ability. You have to identify what's your ability, what's your key ability. Like my key ability was wanting to connect with people to serve. My ability to communicate, like Shakespeare, you said, you did. Do you know what the biggest strength of Shakespeare was? Communication. Mind was communication. How do I communicate? I want to tell, I want to say, I want to speak, I want to perform, I want to do. It was all about communication. And I wanted to get into a service which makes me communicate, which means make me communicate to serve, make me do things. So A is ability. May I urge you, may I urge all of you children, identify what's your key ability and which is the key ability you will keep upgrading as you grow. Do not in any way limit it. Continue to grow. Any, anybody for B? B for bonding, wonderful. B for bonding, believe in yourself. Huh? Sorry, carry on, stand up. What did you say? Boundaries, okay, perfect. Any other? Bold, okay. Any other? Brotherhood, okay, good. Brotherhood to zaru ho jata hai, sisterhood nahi hota hai. <laughs> Brotherhood to baut jor se hota hai. Is vakat na, is desh ko zarurt hai, to sisterhood ki zarurt hai. But you're right, B for brotherhood is another way. Any other B? Huh? Belonging. Okay, great. All these are very valid. What that boy said, boundaries. Huh? Brave. Very beautiful, all these names are relevant. The freedom means also boundaries. Mr. Mukherjee talked about boundaries when he was speaking. Now in this boundaries, what does it mean? Do you know what it means? It means boundaries of law. It means boundaries of freedom. It mean, means boundaries in the manner, in the manner you exercise your freedom. Is this the exercise to do anything? Go anywhere? Spend anywhere, say anything, dress anything. It isn't. It is everything within, within. It is freedom within norms, within boundaries. You set your norms, fine. Children, would you sit down? Both of you girls, both, three of you, you settle down. So be for boundaries. Remember what is happening in India today. We are crossing certain boundaries of language, speech, 
speech behavior the debates which we are doing in uh, in our certain media the way we crossing certain boundaries they going beyond boundaries so what happened we switch off the television or we switch off the debate because or boundaries of living coexistence look what happened in the boundaries in in calcutta case in calcutta case what happened who crossed the boundaries and what to what disaster here was somebody in, uh, interested or appointed for a, for a particular duty and what did he do he took away a person's human life a life and assaulted her and and exploited her he crossed his boundary he had the permission to be there given a duty but what did he do he broke the boundaries of his duty so everything has its own boundaries so freedom a b for boundaries would you remember it so whatever decision you take now why am i saying this to you you will all take decisions in life you'll take financial decisions family decisions social decisions psychological decisions relationship decisions you will see you will take all these delicious decisions remember design your boundaries Des at the moment you are within a boundary by the way you are already within a boundary but the moment you leave this boundary you have to design your own boundaries and who will who will do better and better those who stay design their own boundaries within while enjoying the sense of freedom okay what does c stand for challenges communicate huh conscience huh courageous conscientious sorry c for creativity collaboration calmness caution see all these are great qualities of freedom camaraderie community compassion speak stand up and speak stand up and speak ha huh? confidence ji compassion yes collaboration all these are very very vital aspects how you how you use them to remain free because these are all human rights respect for human rights so c for another way of saying would would be conscience all those of you who will be answering your inner conscience will stay within boundaries and do you know we all have a have you ever heard your conscience if any one of you has read heard your own conscience raise your hands and i'll tell you how my conscience spoke to me in a particular time lovely hands have you heard your conscience raise your hands those who realize that they have a conscience so that indicates why we can have a habit of listening to our conscience and what is listening to your conscience conscience is nothing but your inner voice which speaks to you provided you give it time to speak and you're willing to listen otherwise it's range remains dormant it wants rest is resting till you wake it up and it's always at your beck and call answering listening to your conscience conscience will tell you that here is a boundary being punctured don't do it you will pass mama's test as shiv khera talked it in his book you can win he said mama's test papa test you have to pass if you be doing something interesting and you doing something wrong if it passes mama test papa test if, if mummy gets to know and she's happy with it you pass mama's test but if she's you are afraid then you fail the mama's test or papa's test when i was working at, in pondicherry at a assignment given to me by government of india i used to sit down every morning to listen to my conscience and i used to prompt it like chat gpt like chat gpt i used to prompt it saying i have an issue i have a problem what do you think i can do and i'm serious about it i've written this in my book too and i have i am amazing memories of this 
because at that time, Pondicherry, I neither knew the language, did I have Tamil friends. I had team members, but we did, none of us knew each other from the North. So we were all strangers, but we became great team members later. And that's the time I needed a friend. And that was my inner voice, where I used to do a chat GPT to my conscience. And I would say, I have a challenge with so-and-so. I have a problem. Where is this solution? The conscience would direct me, consider this. Have this as an idea. You know, we all have a chat GPT within. That C is for conscience. So while you have a chat GPT outside, you have a chat GPT inside. And if all of us realize that, I think we are through for the rest of the life. And last is D. What do you think is D? Determination. Duty. Daringly. Uh, daringly. What else? Speak. Come on. All of you think about D. Uh, speak. Come on. D for? D for daddy? Come on. D for? In the context of freedom. Come on. D for? D for? Speak your heart. Come on. D for? Speak your heart. Come on. Perfect. D for duty. D for duty. D for duty and all these things fall in. You all have a duty. You first have a duty to yourself to remain healthy. You have a duty to, for yourself to yourself to grow up correctly, wisely, sensibly, maturely with all things in, within boundaries. You all have a duty first to yourselves. Then you have a duty towards your families. You have a duty towards your school. You have a duty towards your friends. You have a duty towards your near and dear ones. Most of all, you have a duty towards your country. We are forgetting our duty towards our country. Many of you will go overseas for further studies. Your biggest duty at that time would be continue to grow your ability, continue to know your boundaries, keep listening to your conscience, and do your duty as, an, as a proud Indian. That's your duty to it. You all have a precious, sacred duty to perform. So friends, I thought, since you talked about freedom, I thought I could take you forward in this aspect of your life and that say to you something which you will not forget. And it's not a lecture, it's an acronym. And we all know how we all learn hard by making these kinds of acronyms. So what's your acronym? And you can A, B, C, D, E, you can use E for environment. And all of us are going to be fighting for climate change. But again, we live within our boundaries, climate will not get carbonized. See. Everything somehow or the other will start falling into the ABCD of freedom. But we all have huge social responsibilities as human beings for now, for our own country and towards the world. May you all become great, successful, proud Indians and great human beings who would be an asset to the world over as Indians. And the country could be proud of each one of you. Most grateful to your school for giving me this precious time to come and speak to you and reach out to you. I want to thank once again the Kalra family, the Kalra family for bringing me here. Madam Principal Nita, my friend, Mr. Mukherjee for learning so much from you today. Hope to see you again, maybe another school, you never know. And each one of you with a prayer, with a prayer that you sharpen your ability, you learn your boundaries, you listen to your conscience, and that you fulfill your duties with aplomb and great sense of responsibility. Jai Hind.